Hello everybody and welcome to the Cheryl Technology Channel. And in this one, we are going to be talking about segmentation, the second part in my networking series. Peace everybody, how you doing? Let's just get right into it because I don't want to waste no time with it. So in this video, we are going to be looking at segmentation. My first video, I gave you an introduction to spaces. Remember, spaces and broadcast domains. So in this one, that's what we're gonna be looking at. Segmentation. The word sounds complicated, but it's not. Now, think of how we did it in the first video, see? We were talking in terms of spaces, right? So we're looking at this in terms of spaces versus broadcast domains. It's the same thing, but spaces is a little easier to understand. People get turned off by broadcast domain. They have no idea what it means. Basically, it is a space. That's all it is. All of these devices, as we said in the last video, this access point, that's my beautiful, sweet access point. I have two of these. And basically what it does is it provides Wi-Fi for all the devices so that they can connect to the local area network or the local space. Now, if we take this light, let's, let's assume this is a device. This device is connected to this access point. It's in the same space. So when it sends a request across the network, like I said in the first video, it sends a request across the network and says, hey, is anybody there? And then the, the access point replies, oh, dude, I know you. I've seen you before. Or it may not see you before. I don't know. It depends on whether it's seen you before or not. But if it has, it'll say, oh, wait, I know you. You have this IP address, blah, 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 blah so on and so forth that's what they do now segmentation introduces a new concept it's not technically a new concept it's just a building on of the original concept of yes local area networks so let's look at it so let's say that this area this space is a broadcast domain this is my house a broadcast domain now let's say that we want to go into a different space or broadcast domain we're going to walk through the house. See right here? We have a door. So what do you think this door represents? Is there anybody in the comments that can tell me what I said in the last video? Let's see how close y'all are paying attention. What I actually said was that that door right there is the gateway. It's a border or a gateway between an internal and external. That gateway is a gate. It's a door between you and the outside world. So if we walk over here to the door, let me show you. Y'all coming with me this time. It's a beautiful day in my neighborhood. Would you be my neighbor? And so if we open this door, boom, we just opened the gateway to the external world. Now, if we, yeah, I hear the stupid dogs barking, awesome. And so if we, if we think of that, of spaces and doors in terms of gateways and broadcast domains, this starts to make a little more sense. So let's go this way. And let's go right here. So this door is a gateway or a router. Now, this is a concept. If we open the door, boom, my bedroom. Boom, let's close it. See, it's a broadcast domain. Anything in that space can hear anything that's in that space. But once it leaves this door, it can't. Now, this is where a broadcast domain and routers come into play. If we as a local area network want to talk to anybody out here or in any space for that matter we are we got to open the door we have to open the door but we can't open the door without the proper communication protocols or without the proper equipment and for the sake of argument let's say that in this space we want to travel from this space to the space right here how do we do that well, the way we do that is through a router. A router is a link between, it's not a link, it's a go-between. Two separate broadcast domains, right? So to, to go from this broadcast domain, this space, to the bedroom space, or the bathroom space over there, we have to have a router in between to mitigate the traffic. You have to have something to move the traffic from this network to that network. Now, broadcast domains are different networks. And so, in terms of these things, this is how it works. It's very simplistic. In, in concept, it's simple. But in action, it's a very difficult process. I'm just giving you the basic rundown. As you can see, 
we have three doors here. That's my mama's bedroom. That's the bathroom. And that's my bedroom. Now, each one of these spaces are their own broadcast domain. Anything in that space can hear itself. But if you want something in this space to hear something in that space over there, you have to have a gateway or a router. Something that can take the traffic and move it to the next network. Mm. So now, is this making a little more sense? So now I'm going to sit down, y'all, because my darn feet are tired. And so anything that's in this space can hear itself. Anything over there can hear itself, but it cannot communicate without a router. A router routes between two different networks. That's what it does. That's all it does. Now, the next concept I'm going to introduce to you, right? You remember we talked in the last video about how a server, the clients that have gaming, like for Call of Duty Warzone, peace out to my cuñado, those, those specific servers are mitigating traffic from multitudes of networks. How do they do that? That's a very good question. I don't know all the details. I know basically how they work. They have a listening port on these servers that listens for incoming traffic from clients. So let's say, for instance, that you have a client that is on PC, and then you have a client that's on the Xbox. Each one of those probably uses different ports, I'm assuming. A server has ports that it listens on, and it listens for this traffic. And when it hears it, it's like, oh, we need to set up a session with that client over there. That would be in the bathroom over there. So think of it this way. If, if you have a, a server that is listening for these, this traffic, it listens on a specific port. When the client sends the traffic out, it communicates on that same port. Awesome, huh? My, your mind is blown right now, isn't it? Yeah, mine too. And so that's how they work. Now, I'm not saying that... I, what I'm trying to get across to all of you is that for a network to work, there's certain things that have to be in place. There's certain things that have to work properly. And DNS is one of those things. I'm going to do a separate video on DNS because it deserves a video all by itself. But basically, this is how these things work. You basically have a space or broadcast domain, and everything in the area can talk to it. Like, I'm talking right now. My wife can hear me. But if I was in the bedroom, she would have a little more trouble. See what I'm saying? That's basically how it works. If you have any questions about this, I, I encourage you to leave them in the comments because... I love answering questions. I've helped a lot of people to understand things better. I've helped a lot of people to move further. And I, I love helping people to understand this stuff. So if you are lacking knowledge and you want some help, reach out to me in the comments or send me an email at sherltechnology at gmail.com and I will be glad to help you. Now, this leads me to my final thought. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to know him, trust me, you do. Reach out to me in the comments or send me an email at cherylteknology.gmail.com and I will be more than happy to pray with you, to talk to you, to listen, or to debate. Whichever one of those you want to do, I can do them all. And in my next video, everybody, oh, y'all ain't going to believe what's coming next. I don't know what video I'm going to do next quite yet. I'm still working on that, but this is the video I'm doing now. And I pray that if any of you don't know him, don't know Jesus Reach out to me, man. I'm telling you, he will change you forever. He really will. And until next time, everybody, peace.